what do Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Elijah have in common? Well, stay tuned. We're going to find out in our session today. Shalom, and thanks for joining us for another teaching about the Bible in the context of the land of Israel. In fact, this is where we're heading today, a city called Beersheba. Beersheba is, I guess, uh, in the context of the entire length of Israel, which is about 300 miles long. I guess we could safely say Beersheba is sort of in the middle of the country, but yet all the uh, area south of Beersheba it really constitutes the other half of of the land of the Bible, from Beersheba all the way down to the Red Sea. But uh, we're heading to Beersheba in a small archaeological site there. So what do Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Elijah have in common? Well, maybe you guessed it by now. Uh, they all visited Beersheba. Now, the ruins that we're going to see do not date to the time of the patriarchs, but they certainly do date to the time of Elijah. So we're going to see a couple interesting things. Uh, Beersheba is not a, a large site, uh, it's certainly in contrast to other archaeological sites in Israel, but the connections with the Bible, uh, I think, are, are important ones to make as we hear this phrase from Dan to Beersheba. In fact... Now, let me just get back to the map here and show you. Uh, the Danites, actually, in Judges 18, uh, they actually relocated all the way here to the northern part of the land. So this phrase that appears in the Bible from Dan to Beersheba occurs a number of times. So basically, we're talking about the northern extension of the, the kingdom and pretty much the southern because, again, below Beersheba, there's really nothing much than uh, the desert lands of the Negev all the way down to the Red Sea. So, uh, that's where we're heading today, Beersheba. And I uh, am glad that you're with us. So, again, we'd be honored if you hit the subscribe and the red button. If you want to continue to follow us, uh, of course, subscribe to our channel and be alerted to all of our new teachings that we post. So, let's get to Beersheba, and uh, we'll start our visit together. Let's go. Beersheba is located in the biblical Negev area or region of the country that receives only four to eight inches of rain a year. Could it be that the psalmist in chapter 126 refers to the water courses or the flash floods of the dry riverbeds? So when we begin to see the city itself, most of the archaeological structures that we see uh, are dating to the time of Solomon and throughout the Judean kingdom. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Elijah, and others were here at Beersheba. This was the southernmost region of the country. From Dan to Beersheba is a common phrase that we read about in the scriptures. But this water well, as well as the structures, don't date to the time of the patriarchs. But we see that there is a well here. According to Genesis 21, Abraham made a treaty here with Abimelech. In fact, the name Beersheba means the well of the oath, or treaty. But here attached to this well is a trough. And this reminds me of Psalm 23, when we talk about the goodness of God overflowing in the cup. My cup overflows, you know the term. Well, perhaps this is a good image for us to consider 
when we think of a shepherd who brings his flock of sheep or goats here, and a good shepherd keeps this trough to overflowing with water. It's a wonderful image of how God continues to overflow us with his goodness. But let's walk into the city. We're going to right away see some of the stone pavements that led into the city and through the gate that most date to the time of Solomon. This means that these structures are 10th century BC. Here in this region you'll see stone structures as well as mud brick being used as well. This was a chamber gate so as we walk into this gate uh, we'll enter technically the city. This city was made with rounded streets probably to at least capture the rainwater when it would rain here in this very arid area or region of the land and this would be diverted into the cistern system that we'll see later on. But just around this corner in 1973 they found and this is only a replica of the four-horned altar. Only fragments were found. I believe only three of the horns were found uh, being used in secondary usage. This is displayed at the Isbro Museum in Jerusalem. So this is only a replica and yet it reminds us of the reforms that kings like Hezekiah and Josiah brought to Ju Judah during this time when the Judeans had these false worship centers, even one right here during the time of the divided kingdom. Keep in mind that Jerusalem is about 60 miles due north. So for an area so far from Jerusalem and for a matter of convenience, these Judeans built a temple here. So continuing on this rounded street, we can see most of the structures have been restored for us by the archaeologist. Again, you'll see stone and mud brick being used. The rule of thumb archaeologically is that the lower you go, the earlier the ruins date to. But of interest to us is a typical Israelite four-room house. It's coming up here on our left as we make our way around this rounded street. These structures have been found all over Israel. It's a typical structure used as a house plan, if you will, by Israelites and Judeans alike. You can see the supporting stones gathered together, serving as a pillar to support the second floor of this house. Now, to take a look at a reconstruction of one of these four-room houses, you can see what it would have looked like with courtyards, a primary living quarter, maybe an area where cooking took place, a kitchen if you will, and then a second floor to this house. And again, these supporting pillars would have supported the second floor of this structure. Very interestingly, this four-room house here was built right against the casemate wall of Beersheba. But you can see from the observation tower the extensiveness of the excavations of this city. Here we can zoom in and take a look at the storehouse. Just to the left of the entrance into the city through that city gate that we used ourselves. So the excavations are impressive, although this site has not been really touched for many decades now. This is the storehouse. Last but not least, 
I think the most impressive thing about this site is the cistern system. Look how deep this system is. Most of what you're seeing in front of you is all original. There is a restoration line that marks where archaeologists restored this cistern system. But the entrance down these steps, all original. People would have come down with their buckets to this closed, concealed, darkened area of cisterns where water would have been kept safely. This is where we came from. We walked down these steps. Very close to the top is that restoration line, so everything below that line is all original. Imagine the engineering expertise in, in building this cistern. So walking down into the cistern area, again water was scarce here in this Negev, so water was certainly captured and brought into this cistern through a pipe that no doubt was water reached from the aquifer outside the city and then simply diverted into these cisterns. Perhaps the rainwater from these rounded streets would have also been diverted into this cistern. These cisterns were plastered so that the soft limestone would not absorb the water. So Beersheba, a city of the patriarchs, a city built by Solomon, the southern city of Judah, a wonderful site to visit. So as you just saw with me, uh, Beersheba is not at all a large site, and most of it is first temple, which means from Solomon's time until it was destroyed by the Babylonians in uh, the 6th century BC. But I love that image of the well and the trough. We started out with that because that's really the first thing that we see at the site. Uh, but to just to pause to think about how God's goodness uh, overflows to us, just like a shepherd uh, putting water in that trough and allowing his sheep to drink. Well, the key is, as long as the sheep are thirsty for water, a good shepherd will keep that filled. And of course, God invites us to thirst after him. And as we come to him, we discover his goodness in so many a remarkable ways. So I hope you liked the visit to Beersheba, and certainly, uh, as I did not include any drone video in this particular teaching session, um, be on the lookout for our new drone project that will be out in August of 2020, uh, just around the corner, and uh, we hope that uh, you'll be interested in that, uh, because a drone perspective of the city also just gives you a sense of the, of the archaeological site and uh, really the, the size of it as well. But the connections are there. And again, uh, thank you for allowing me to uh, lead you to this archaeological site in the biblical Negev of Israel. So until next time, Shalom.